Hello there friends, CS News live here. In today's video, new team for simple. Astralis might be deciding on two coaches at once. VP is facing a disband and players being tested for drugs right in the middle of the tournament. Plus, we've got plenty of other exciting news from the world of CS2, so without further ado, let's get straight to it. And we shall kick off today's episode with the star player of Eternal Fire, Xantares. In one of our previous videos, we mentioned how Thorin believes that Santaris is far stronger than the rest of Eternal Fire and is wasting his potential with this lineup. Now, after Eternal Fire's elimination from IEM Cologne, Maui Snake has echoed these sentiments. According to the analyst, in terms of firepower, Xantaris is currently only behind Manisi, Zaivu and Donk. And even in Eternal Fire, Centaurus is consistently putting up a 1.28 rating. So Maui Snake pointed out that the Turkish Dream Team mainly wins rounds when Centaurus is still alive. And you know what, unfortunately, it's really hard to disagree with it, because Centaurus is basically carrying the entire team on his own. And that's the reason why we can safely say that he's basically wasting his talent, especially given how much he's improved lately. And you know what guys, it looks like we may have found the perfect destination for Centaurus. It's complexity. The potential move is primarily due to the team's lack of firepower. According to former Fnatic coach Jumpy, Elige is the only strong player in the lineup. He believes that if Complexity can find someone on Elysia's level, the team could consistently reach the playoffs in Tier 1 tournaments. And yeah, we believe that the best option here is Centaurus. Just imagine, two incredibly powerful fraggers on the same team. But even if this move is possible, the question remains, who would Centaurus replace? Obviously not Holzerg, because he's the Oper, and not JT, because he's the captain. But you know what, Elige could be the captain captain here as well, because he used to be one, he has the experience. That basically leaves him, Grim and Floppy as options. Statistically, Centaurus is stronger than both Grim and Floppy, but Grim contributes more impact, so if Centaurus is signed, it's likely that Floppy would be the one benched. And also, communication issues shouldn't be a problem here, because Centaurus previously played in B.I.G. So, he could just be the perfect upgrade. My friends, would you like to see Centaurus in complexity? If you have any other options, just write them down in the comments below. And since we're talking about the NA scene, it's worth mentioning the Team Liquid players, who recently shared what they love in the new video. It turns out that out of all players, only Ultimate prefers Dust 2 over Inferno, while Yekinder and Nav favor basketball over football. Interestingly, all the players prefer European food over American cuisine, if you can say so, and they'd rather use a smoke than a Molotov. Most of them also like to warm up in surf mode instead of KZ. And JKS would prefer mountains to beaches. Some cool and pleasant facts from Team Liquid. And sticking again with the American CS, Thorin recently suggested 8 teams where Simple could potentially join as a rifler. Among these teams, there are some big names like Navi, Complexity, Falcons, Liquid, Vitality, G2, FaZe and even Virtus Pro. I mean, what is Thorin, like, smoking? Or is he drunk? Certainly, Simple will never join Virtus Pro due to political reasons. While other options are pretty realistic. There's just one problem, Simple has stopped playing CS altogether and is simply having fun with his friends. I remind you that his last match was against Matty's board when he was playing on loan for Falcons, and he had like 0.94 rating. I mean, it's super obvious that there's a significant gap between Simple's current form and the level required for top tier teams. And as Blade said, I will quote, he needs to go to train to tier 3 scene. So yeah, I guess for Simple to return, he'll just first need to get back into shape. But guys, what do you think? Can Simple make a comeback? or is it time for the legend to officially retire? Or has he already done it? Anyways, share your thoughts in the comments below. And while some teams are just considering changes, others are already making moves. Monte has officially parted ways with Stiko, and they brought in K to take his place. Now almost the entire roster consists of Polish players. 
Stiko himself said that he believes Monty will succeed with this Polish project and he'll continue to support and cheer for the team. And my friends, to be honest, I don't really know what to say. Have they become stronger or weaker? I guess we will only see at the closed qualifiers for the RMR. Speaking of changes, it might be the time for Astralis to consider a shakeup, not in their roster but in their coaching staff. Launders recently shared his thoughts on this. According to the analyst, the Danish team has a strong lineup in terms of firepower, but they're struggling with tactics. And just listen to this, Launders suggests Hooksy to be the solution as the team's coach. And he thinks that this could theoretically work out quite well. He says that such a lineup could easily make it to the top 8 of Major in Shanghai. But if you recall, in recent videos we mentioned that Kerrigan might leave FaZe. So hear me out guys, what if Kerrigan takes the coaching role at Astralis? It would be like the return of the prodigal son. Remember, before Glaive joined Astralis, it was Kerrigan who led the team as captain. I think this could be something like Astralis 2.0, potentially even reaching higher than 8th place at the Major. But for now it's just speculation. Who knows what the future holds? And before we dive into match analysis, let's take a look at some of the stats of Virtus Pro. According to a well-known insider from the CAS region, changes are coming soon to the Bears, and it seems that bringing Electronic into the lineup was a big mistake. Stake. This decision to bring Electronic in was made by Das Stan, who has since left the team, leaving the new coach to work with the roster that he is uncomfortable with. And these stats are also highlighting the issue with Denise. Every player's performance has dropped significantly, with the team only securing 4 wins against the top 10 teams and an overall win rate of 48%. And another issue with the team is the unstable captaincy role. While Jame used to call the shots all the time, this new player, unfamiliar with VP's style, has taken over, leading to problems with communication. There's a lot of replays which show that Electronic expresses frustration with his teammates. He yells a lot and is toxic. Such behavior rarely leads to positive outcomes in a team. And given these results, it's likely that Virtus Pro will undergo roster changes soon. My friends, what do you think VP should do? Will they disband or will they just make some adjustments? Write your thoughts in the comments below. Finally, let's dive into the matches. Today we had some intense games lined up. Falcons vs FaZe, Liquid vs Complexity, G2 vs Pain, Soul vs Navi and Mouse vs Vitality. And also a match between the winner of the first two pairs. Let's start with the showdown between FaZe and Falcons. The first map was Dust2, picked by Falcons. And it started started off disastrously for them as they lost 8 consecutive rounds. Just a reminder, typically the team that picks the map secures most of the rounds on the T side on Dust 2. Fortunately, Falcons managed to put themselves together towards the end of the half and grabbed 4 rounds. After the side switch, the Shakes team managed to impose their game and win another 4 rounds, leveling the score. But then Brokey won a crucial 1v3 clutch, bringing FaZe back into the game and they went on to win 3 more rounds, nearly close closing it out. However, something went wrong for FaZe and the map went to overtimes. But there, FaZe Clan just found their rhythm in the attack and closed out the map. Next was Ancient, FaZe's pick. Here the game were more balanced, so to say, in the first half, with Falcons taking a streak of rounds, followed by FaZe answering back. This back and forth led to a 7-5 scoreline in the first half. But after the side switch, Falcons struggled to break through FaZe's defense and managed to win only one round, the pistol round. This ultimately led to FaZe advancing, while Falcons were eliminated from the tournament. Meanwhile, Complexity met Liquid, and the first map was Ancient. Things didn't start well, they won the pistol round but then lost 5 in a row to Complexity. However, the team managed to put themselves together, securing a streak of 4, though they lost the last two, ending the first half at 7-5. After the side switch, things improved significantly for Liquid. Despite being down 7-10, they went on a 6-round winning streak and took the first map. Next was Anubis, Complexity's pick. Initially, the game seemed evenly matched, but in the 9th round, Ultimate decided to go all out, pulling off an ace. This moment swung the momentum for Liquid's favor, allowing them to take 4 rounds in a row and win the first half with 7-5. 
on the weaker side. And in attack, Liquid didn't drop a single round. They secured the victory and advanced, while Complexity were eliminated. Next up, G2 vs Spain, and the first map was Nuke, picked by the Brazilians. And things didn't start well for them, as G2 was winning almost everything they could, but that's somewhat expected, since they were playing on the CT side. Fortunately, it wasn't a complete blowout. Spain managed to secure four rounds, which gave them a glimmer of hope. However, G2 had other plans and completely dismantled Payne's defense. The Brazilians barely managed to win two rounds on their CT side before G2 closed out the map. Then came Mirage, G2's pick. And, my friends, I don't really have anything to say here. G2 just won. 13 won, and it was all. The most memorable highlight was a knife kill on the second pistol round. In the end, G2 advanced while the Brazilians were eliminated. But hear me out here, the real drama started after the match. First, G2 was subjected to do a drug test. And then there was a moment when their coach Taz probably broke the rules. Because during a match he pointed at a sheet of paper on the player's table and then they just won the following round. But according to the rules, the coach is only allowed to communicate with the team during pauses. So Taz technically violated the rules. If this happens again, he could be banned from standing behind the team for the remainder of the tournament. Meanwhile, Navi were facing off against Saw. The first map was Nuke, picked by the Portuguese. After a strong start for Navi with a pistol round and a follow-up, Saw began to gain momentum on the T-side. They won almost eight rounds in a row, so they had a significant lead going into the second half. And after the side switch, Saw secured another another four rounds, reaching the map point. Yeah, that's right. Navi tried to mount a comeback, winning five rounds, but it wasn't enough and they lost the first map. Next up was Ancient, Navi's pick. And the Portuguese team was completely dismantled, destroyed. They managed to take only two rounds in the first half and even those were like hard fought. Saw so had some chances to get back into the game, but Bit pulled off an incredible 1v4 clutch. Wonderful's not ready to be fought there. It looks like Aristos is smoking to escape. He's smoking to fight. Catches him by surprise. And the orb leg connects as well. Story just comes uh -oh. swinging. Will that be a bridge too far? Bomb planted. Roman doesn't want to risk the spam. That gets Bit's gun back out and in action. Aros Doss heard on a flank. Roman needs to wait. He's giving away the chance. And Bit should know. He should have heard him from middle. Stood still. Unwavering, waiting, and clutching up is bits. And the second half ended quickly, with the map concluding with a knife kill by Imei. Then came Inferno. The first half was relatively even, with the teams finishing off with a minimal difference in rounds won. However, after the side switch, Saw could only secure one round, while Navi confidently closed out the map securing their spot directly in the quarterfinals. So, on the other hand, we'll have to fight in the round of 16. After that, Mouse met Vitality. It all started on Dust 2, the French team's pick. And this map could easily be considered one of Mouse's worst performances in the new era. They didn't win a single round in the first half. There was still some chance for a comeback as they managed to secure a streak of 6 in the second half, but that was all they could muster. I mean, if they had won just a few rounds in the first half, they might have pulled off the comeback, but something clearly went wrong. Next was Mouse's pick, Vertigo. And things looked better for them here. After winning the pistol round and the follow-up, they dropped a streak of 5, but then answered back with their own streak, finishing the first half with a 7-5 score. However, Vitality started to gain momentum in the second half, eventually reaching the map point. But Mouse produced a crazy comeback and pushed the game into the overtimes. But unfortunately, they only managed to win the first round in OTs and Vitality simply closed it out, sending themselves to the quarterfinals while Miles will have to compete in the round of 16. The final match of the day was a showdown between Liquid and FaZe, a rematch and a decisive game since only one team would advance to the playoffs. It all started on Inferno, Liquid's pick. Both teams are strong on this one, so it was expected to be a close battle. And it was so as both teams were playing neck to neck, ending at 6-6. But after the side switch, FaZe began to dominate, taking 5 in a row and seemingly ready to close it out. 
However, Liquid responded with a streak of 3. But then, FaZe finally secured their opponent's pick. Next up was Nuke, and it started with a quad drop from Brokey in the pistol round. What a beauty. And then Liquid began to pick up rounds, but FaZe fought back. And it was a tie in the first half, again. After the side switch, FaZe won 5 in a row and looked poised to finish the map, but Liquid refused to go down without a fight, winning a crucial 3v5 and pushing the game into overtimes. And there, Twist's new team managed to secure the win. Next came Mirage, arguably the most thrilling map of the whole tournament so far. Liquid dominated from the start, taking almost every round. Twist got a quadro in the third round. And by the fifth, JKS secured a 1v3 clutch. This led to a staggering 11-1 in the first half, and it seemed like FaZe Clan was done. But bros, it's FaZe Clan, they weren't ready to give up. They won the pistol round and then started to mount an incredible comeback, and I mean it, taking round after round after round, not giving Liquid any chance. They pushed the game to overtimes, from 1-11, and they had the momentum, and they won it. And in the end, wow, FaZe, unbelievable comeback. I haven't seen such in a long time. They secured the final spot in the playoffs, while Liquid unfortunately had to pack their bags and head home. The team was visibly devastated after the match. JKS was in tears, and Twist even posted a meme on Twitter showing a person wearing a smiling mask while crying underneath. It was a tough loss for Liquid, but that's CS, that's esports, and that's why we love it. Nevertheless, it was an amazing game from both teams. I wonder what the future holds for Team Liquid. And to sum up, here's the playoff matchups. Mouse will face G2, so will go up against FaZe, while Vitality and Navi are waiting for their opponents in the quarterfinals. That's all for today, my friends. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our Twitter account, which we will post in the comments below, and to our channel as well, and hit the like button. Thank you, thank you once again, and I'm not saying goodbye for a long time. See you soon!